Hi, I'm Valerie Gatch here with a new Lightroom tutorial on culling your images. This means whittling down your images to the best ones, the ones you want to keep. You'll want to do this before you start editing because you don't want to waste time editing images that you don't need. Lightroom is super flexible, so you have lots of ways to cull your images. There's no right or wrong way, and every photographer has his or her own opinion on how to do it. In this tutorial, I'll go over using flags, star ratings, and color labels, and I'll show you my favorite way of making quick work of this project. Well, you can rank your images in other modules as fastest and easiest to do it in the library module. There are three main methods for rating your images, using stars, flags, or color labels, or a combination of them. So the first way we'll look at is with star ratings. Using stars is pretty common, but it's also very subjective, and some people agonize over whether an image should be three or four stars, and therefore it can be a rather slow process. But to rate your images with stars, you can either press the keys 1 through 5 for the corresponding stars. So if I wanted to rate this image here um, 3 stars, I could just hit the 3 key. Or hit 0 to remove stars. And you can also use the stars in the toolbar here at the bottom. You'll note that this image here that's highlighted has 3 stars showing and if I wanted to change that I could use this here and change it to four stars. There you see it right there. So later after you've done all of your star ratings you can go through and filter your images to show say for instance just the four and five star images. Another method is to use flags. You can flag images using P for pick. So again, we'll go back to this image, and if I hit the P key, you'll see that this uh, little white flag appeared in the upper left corner. And if you don't want an image, say I don't want this image here, I could just hit the X key, and that will flag it as rejected, and it can be deleted later. And if you want to change the flag status of an image, just hit U to unflag. The third method of rating or tagging images is with color labels. You can label images with the colors red, yellow, green, blue, or purple by selecting the image and hitting the key 6 through 9 on the keyboard. So for example, um, let's go back to this image and if we want to give it a color label, let's say let's hit the 6 key and that gives it a red label. To remove the color label, just hit the corresponding number again. So if I hit 6 again, it deletes the label. And there's no shortcut for purple, so in order to assign a purple label to an image, you can either use, click on the bottom right corner of the thumbnail, and you can assign purple or one of the other colors for that matter using this um, drop-down list. Or you can also use the colors labels in the uh, toolbar menu down here. Some people like to use the color labels to indicate where they are in their workflow or for certain types of images, uh, such as perhaps yellow for work in progress, green for panoramics, uh, red to print. You can create your own custom color labels um, and assign the meanings rather to your color labels by going to metadata and then clicking on the color label set and edit. And then in here you see in this dialog box you can change the wording so you can say, you know, instead of red you can put the color red means print, for example. One other thing I wanted to point out is if you're using Adobe Bridge and you want to maintain compatibility in Bridge, then you should use the same label names. So if you change this to uh, the red to print in Lightroom, you'll want to do the same in Adobe Bridge so that you have compatibility. You can also have multiple tags on an image. So for example, you can have an image, as you see here, it's flagged as a pick. It has a star rating and it also has a color label. And if you want to assign the same rating to a group of images, you can do that pretty easily. Like say for example, I wanted to give this whole row of images um, a three star rating. I could just click on the first image, click on the last, and highlight the whole row. Let's just click the number three. And that has set them all to a three star rating. 
And if you want to pick out non-contiguous images um, to assign ratings, say I want to pick this image, I can hold down the control key and then pick um, an image that's not adjacent to it. Let's pick this one, for example. And then I can assign them, say, a color label. So those are the basics. And now I want to show you how I rate and sort my images. I like to use flags. In fact, many photographers prefer the flagging system because after all, if you go through and agonize over whether an image should be two or three or four stars, what are you going to do with all those one, two, three star images? Are you going to use them? Don't you want to use your best images? So why waste any of your time, any more time than you have to with mediocre images? So the first thing I do after I import my images is go through them quickly in grid view, which as you may recall, if you're not already in grid view, you can get to it just simply by hitting the G key on your keyboard. And I immediately flag the outright bad images like out of focus shots or when I accidentally took a photo of my foot by mistake, etc. I flag them as rejected by clicking on them and hitting, uh, hitting the X key and it flags them for deletion later. Oh, also, remember that you can enlarge the thumbnails by moving the slider up and down if you want to see your images larger. And then once I've marked for deletion all of the images that are obviously bad and I know for sure I don't want to keep them, then under the photo menu here at the top, you can just click on photo and then click on delete rejected photos and those will remove them from your catalog and or from your um, disk as well if you choose to and I usually choose to remove them from my disk so that they don't take up any extra space. Now that I've done a preliminary look through I'll go into loop view by either double clicking on an image or hitting the E key or using the loop um, icon down here at the bottom and then I'll go through and the ones I really like I'll mark with a P flag for pick and the ones I'm not sure about I won't flag. The ones I don't like I'll click X to flag them for deletion. So I'll flag this image with a P and then to advance to the next image I have a trick for you just put your cap locks on and then when you hit uh, P, X or U it will automatically advance to the next image and if for some reason you don't want to do it that way then you can simply just uh, use your keyboard right arrow to advance to the next image. So I'm just going to go through and mark a few of these. So now I switch back to the grid view after I've gone through all of my images in loop mode and flagged them as picked or rejects or unflagged. And as you can see, the, um, the ones that are dimmed out are the ones that are flagged for rejection. And I can go ahead and if I wanted to, I can go ahead and delete those. But right now I'm going to show you just how to filter out to get to your picked images. So ju to just see my flagged images, my picked images, I'll use the library filter up at the top and click on attribute. And then I'm going to pick the flags based on um, picked images. So I will only see the images that have my white flag at the top. And then these would be the images that I would want to work with in the develop mode. So from here, you can refine them further if you wish. Some people like to put their picks in a collection and then fine tune them by rating the best of the best, either using stars, pick flags, or color labels, etc. I find the flag method pretty efficient and it gets my culling done very quickly so that I can move on to the fun part, which is editing my images in the develop module. So whatever method you choose, try to keep it simple and don't get caught up in complex star rating systems. The simpler you make it, the faster it will go. I'm Valerie Getch. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, I'd appreciate it if you would hit the like and the subscribe buttons below. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. In the meantime, go out and have fun with your camera, and I'll see you back here soon.